Dustin Johnson is without question a very modern golfer. A supreme athlete whose long hitting and improved wedge game has allowed him to become a two-time major champion and top the world rankings. But it wasn't plain sailing through his rise to the top. Dustin has battled demons and struggled many times in his life. But every sport needs a badass. Somebody who is going to break the rules and keep the tour on their toes. So to start this journey, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. Born in 1984, Columbia, South Carolina, Dustin Hunter Johnson was the first of three children born into a hardworking, loving family. His father, Scott, was a club professional at Mid-Carolina Golf Club, and his mother, Candy, ran the pro shop. The pair thought they had it sussed, working close to each other and being self-employed, thinking they could work the hours they needed. But this wasn't the case. In fact, it was the complete opposite. The golf course was extremely busy, and Scott was forever teaching, and Candy forever selling in the pro shop. So amazingly, it wasn't till Dustin was age six till his dad finally found the time to take his son to the driving range, where he worked. Thinking this was the start of something special, bonding with his dad, Dustin found himself practicing a lot by himself, several bays down from where his dad was teaching. But the bug had already planted itself inside Dustin's mind, and a little boy's dreams were already being made. With or without his father, Dustin wanted to get better, so for his younger years he was pretty much self-taught. But this didn't stop the rapid progression and Dustin's meteoric rise to the top of the junior scene. He began winning weekly and at 14 shot two 64s in consecutive days, setting records at Coldstream Country Golf Club in Irmo and Golden Hills Golf Club in Lexington. Dustin's athletic stature at a young age and tall lanky limbs saw him driving the ball further than any of his young competitors. This advantage saw him win the Junior State Championship and his dreams of becoming a PGA Tour player seemed more believable than ever. But as Dustin's pre-adolescent mind was tunnel visioned on his dreams, his parents were keeping a huge secret from him and his siblings. The pair went through an extremely devastating divorce which tore the family apart. Dustin and his sister Laurie stayed with their father and Austin went with their mother. With their parents no longer speaking and all the kids changing schools, Dustin was at a point in his life where he felt alone. With the new pressure of finding new friends, Dustin began skipping school and ended up getting into the wrong crowd. The gang were known for being troublemakers and fragile Dustin was easily led down the wrong path and coerced into joining a burglary. Dustin was found guilty of pawning stolen goods and others were arrested for burglary with the use of an illegal weapon. After sitting down with his teachers and parents, Dustin was told if you really want to be a PGA Tour player, this has all got to stop. You need every chance you can get and going to college is a must. Dustin was sidetracked for a while, but all of this had brought him back down to earth. His vision was recreated and he was now knuckling down at school, trying to get into college. As well as knuckling down though, Johnson was working really hard on his game. He left high school ranked number 19 in the US rankings, but was finding it extremely hard to find a college that would not only accept his grades, but also his police record. It was Dustin's paternal grandmother, Carol Jones, who called Coastal Carolina men's golf coach Alan Terrell to explain how badly Dustin was trying to play college golf. Dustin was going to Midlands Technical College in Columbia to make up credits, but after the call from Johnson's grandma, Terrell went to Coastal Carolina's president, explained the situation, and got him into the school. Alan Terrell had full responsibility on his hands and was so much more than just a coach to Dustin. Alan made him practice hard on the range and study harder in the classroom. Under new guidance and with a newfound father figure, Dustin blossomed. After a shaky start in his freshman year, he averaged 75 strokes per round. But in his following sophomore year, won all Big South honors and Big South Conference Championship and was named player of the year. Dustin was extremely lucky to have someone by his side, keeping him on the straight and narrow, and he repaid his coach with the best possible gift, winning. Happiness had lifted Dustin to the player he knew he was all along. He began by winning the Monroe Invitational, a Northeast amateur, and then went on to participate in the 2007 Walker Cup and Palmer Cup teams. His time had come to an end at college, and after graduating and majoring in sports management, Dustin didn't hesitate to get his dreams started. He entered the 2007 PGA Tour qualifying school and finished 14th to earn his PGA Tour card for the following season. Leaving everything in his past behind him, DJ was planning on paving a new path in his life. And in his 2008 rookie season, things couldn't have started any better. In October, DJ won his first PGA Tour event at the Turning Stone Resort Championship in upstate New York, and just four months later won again at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. These victories became his entries into stardom, and he has never experienced a decline since. He began the 2010 season defending his AT&T title, and DJ was really implementing his name into the PGA Tour. But after a blissful start, DJ found himself in his first bit of controversy. In the final round of the 2010 PGA Championship, 
Johnson held a one-shot lead entering the final hole. He appeared to have bogeyed the hole, which would have tied him for first and entered him into a three-hole playoff with Bubba Watson and Martin Keimer. However, he received a two-stroke penalty for grounding his club in a bunker, thereby dropping him to a tie for fifth place and Keimer would go on to win. Besides that major setback, Dustin's winning ways continued. With wins at the FedEx Cup playoffs and Barclays Championship, nothing was slowing him down and DJ was getting very used to the winning lifestyle. However, the following season, DJ had a huge setback after a back injury at home made him miss the majority of the 2012 season. Upon his return and now with his brother as his new caddy, the pair got off to a great start. He won the opening event of the 2013 season at the Hyundai Tournament of Champions. The event was Johnson's seventh PGA Tour win and he became the first player since Tiger Woods to win at least once in each of his first seven seasons coming out of college. Now in DJ's eyes, He'd made it. Several wins on tour, Ryder Cup appearance, and now inside the world top 15. He had more money than he knew what to do with, and now with nobody around to tell him what to do. And he certainly wasn't going to listen to his little brother. DJ came off the rails. In 2014, the PGA Tour suspended DJ after he returned a positive drugs test that showed a positive for an illegal Class A drug. It was later brought to light that this wasn't Johnson's first rodeo and in fact failed drugs test in the past for marijuana in 2009 and two for cocaine in 2012 and 2014. It appeared that this was just the dust on the surface and things were a lot worse than people first thought. In August, DJ announced he would take a leave of personal absence with the events bringing to light Johnson's conduct off the course, including frequent sightings at bars in the Jupiter area and sexual indiscretion with at least one wife of a fellow PGA Tour player. His excessive drinking and partying had once again brought a crossroad into Dustin's life and now more than ever was a crucial time to turn the right way. His return to golf, however, in 2015, and after the birth of his first child, Tatum, Dustin had no choice but to grow up, and his return to the PGA Tour was like nothing ever happened. After two top five finishes and a win at the WGC Cadillac Championship, Dustin moved into seventh in the World Golf Rankings. After cementing himself on the PGA Tour and doing more than enough to prove himself, DJ's hopes of a major slipped from his grasps once again. At the 2015 US Open, Johnson held a share of the lead heading into the final round. He birded 17 to get within one of Jordan Spieth and hit a 5 iron to the par 5 18th 12 feet from the hole. He hit his eagle putt to within 3 feet past the hole and then missed the 3 footer coming back to give the title to Spieth. Now there have been plenty of Hall of Famer golfers who haven't won a major. Sometimes it's just not meant to be and on the day somebody else can snatch your dreams away from you. However it's down to you to go away, reassess get back to work and try again. And that's exactly what DJ did. He got to work training with Brooks Kepka and trainer Joey on strength and fitness and looked into his stats to figure out his weak points and put all of his time and effort into them. 2016, he came back a brand new man, hitting it further than ever and a wedge game like he was throwing darts. DJ started off the 2016 season with six top 10 finishes in his first 10 events and then won his first major championship at the US Open, beating three runner-ups by three shots. During the final round of the tournament, there was a controversial incident on the fifth. As DJ prepared to address the ball for a par putt, his ball moved slightly. Johnson stepped away, saying that he had not addressed the ball. After he spoke to an on-site rules official, he was told to carry on with his shot and sank the putt. Later, on the 12th tee, an official informed him that he might be penalised a stroke, but that no decision would be made until the round was complete. Several of the world's top golfers, such as Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy and Ricky Fowler, as well as many viewers on their local Fox stations and spectators at the course, took to social media to criticise the USGA for its decision. Regardless, DJ was still a major winner and was now closing in on his next goal. After starting the 2017 season with two top 10 finishes in his first four events, Johnson won the Genesis Open in February by five strokes and was now the new world number one golfer. The win also cemented a place in history as he joined Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus as the only golfers in PGA Tour history to win a title in each of his first 10 seasons. However, just as DJ hit the highest of highs, more news off the course was starting to surface again. His fiance and mother of his children started deleting every single photo of the pair from all of her social media, sparking a debate that they might have broke up. DJ may have been slipping into old ways, but he announced that he was fully committed to being a family man and those days were behind him. He proved his head was in the right space, winning 
winning the Century Tournament of Champions for the second time with an eight stroke victory over John Rahm. The win meant that Johnson had won a title in his first 11 straight seasons on the PGA Tour and became only the third player in the last 30 years alongside Woods and Mickelson to reach 17 PGA Tour wins before the age of 34. It was record after record and I think it's safe to say that DJ proved a lot of people wrong. The ups and downs of not only in his life but his career made him such a likeable guy. After the 2020 Masters being postponed due to COVID, DJ had a long wait before being able to accomplish a childhood dream. However, when it finally went ahead months later, DJ didn't only win a green jacket, but he also broke records. After being in the lead from day one, DJ held out his victory, winning by five shots over Sung Jae Im and Cameron Smith, beating Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth's record of 18 under par by two strokes. He celebrated with no fans present, but nothing could take this special moment away from him and what he had achieved. So it seemed Dustin had finally found peace and happiness. He'd achieved everything he'd set out to achieve and more. He won every season he's been on tour, won two major championships and two Ryder Cups. He's also the third longest person at the number one spot and was the first player ever to win all four WGC events. At the age of 38 and 29 professional wins, it was time to slow down and spend more time with his family. His decision to sign for Live Golf for $125 million, which is more than his entire PGA Tour earnings, was quoted by him as being what's best for his family. DJ earned himself a whopping $35 million, which is half of his PGA Tour career earnings in just eight events. He was crowned the 2022 individual champion and also won the team event with his team four aces. So to end his PGA Tour career, Dustin Johnson once again finds himself in controversy. The war on golf will continue way past DJ's career, and Dustin has done more than enough to secure his name in the Hall of Fame. Nobody knows the future of golf right now, but DJ believes he's doing the right thing for the good of the game and his family. Through all the roller coasters DJ has been through his whole life, I'm sure this won't be his last. So the PGA Tour can take away his membership and try ban him from majors, but the one thing they can't take away from him is his legacy. Yeah.